Welcome back to uh, MA760 Engineering Analysis 1. So last time we discussed the uh, existence and uniqueness of the solution for the first order differential equation. And we stated that <coughs> in order to um, see whether you have um, a solution or not, or the condition for existence, is you have to have the function, let's say y prime equal to f of x and y, you have to have this function continuous in certain region. So this is the condition for existence. And if the derivative of this function with respect to y is also continuous in the same region, then you will guarantee that you, the solution exists. And it's a unique solution. And it will be uh, in the region um, x minus x naught less than or equal to the minimum of A and B over K. So uh, this is the, um, after, after you fulfill the existence. So the existence condition says that <coughs> F of X and Y should be continuous. in region R, where R is defined as x minus x naught, <coughs> and this is less than A, and y, y minus y naught is less than B. And the um, uniqueness of solution is given by df x and y by dy, which is just y prime. And this is the absolute value for y prime is less than some k. And we, k, we said that k is just a slope and the absolute value of the slope. So you might have a, a negative slope or a positive slope. So <coughs> what you are saying is y prime is the derivative of the solution y. Yes. So what we say here is, is if you find the solution, take the derivative inside this region, which is bounded by x minus x naught equal less than a, or y minus y naught less than b. And if you take the derivative of the solution, which is the slope, your slope must not be greater than k or less than minus k. And this is why when we plot, <coughs> when we plot our uh, y, versus x here, we got two situations. This is the situation here where <coughs> and the midpoint, the initial point here was x naught and y naught, x naught and y naught, and this is b, y minus b, and y plus plus b, and this is y naught, and this is x naught, and this is x naught minus a, and this is x naught plus a. <coughs> and we said that you will have you will have the two slopes. This is k k positive, and this is minus k. And your solution, your solution, which is y, if you take the slope of your solution at any point, should not should not be should not be greater than k or less than minus k. So this is why we said our solution should be in this region when, <coughs> when a is just greater than uh, b over k. In the case where you have a is less than or equal b over k, so b over k, you will have another, another region here. And this is b over k, x minus b over k, and this is x plus b over k, and we said that your solution will be just in this rectangle here, and maybe your solution will be somewhere outside the region R. This is the region R here. So this is the region R, so maybe your solution will come out the region R, and <coughs> you do not guarantee to have a solution outside the region R. So those are the two conditions for um, the uniqueness and existence. First, you have to have a continuous function in the region R. Second, you have to have a continuous function of the derivative of this function, f of x, d f of x, 
and y by dy is continuous in this in this region r then you guarantee that you have a solution and this solution is the unique solution whether it is in two cases whether it is um, a is greater than or, equ or equal to b over k so the solution will be in this region r if a is less than or equal to b over k it will be just in the smaller triangle here and your solution outside the region r might not exist so let's take an example here so <coughs> An example. So dy, dy by dx is 2xy divided by 1 plus x square plus y square. This is a linear or nonlinear equation. Nonlinear. Why? You have a square. There is no problem if you have the x square, but uh, I have a square in y. Yes. So. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, this is nonlinear, and y at 0 is just equal to 0. So um, we want to see if this does it have um, a unique solution, a unique solution <coughs> in R where r is defined as the absolute value of x is less than or equal to a half and the absolute value of y is less than or equal to 1. So um, a is half here and here, so absolute value of x um, less than or equal to half. This means that x minus x naught, x naught is what? Zero. Equal to what? One half. So you are centered around x not equal to zero, <coughs> and a is equal to what? One half, and a is equal to one half. So x minus one half, and x plus one half. If you take, if you take the absolute value, this will give you x absolute value less than or equal to half. And y is uh, here is is less than or equal to what? One and uh, uh, minus one. This is the absolute value of y, of course. <coughs> the absolute value of y. So, so clearly, if if the function f and and its derivative with respect to y, the r are continuous and r are continuous. If they are continuous and r, <coughs> so uh, we will have. a unique solution and this is what we said we'll have a unique solution if if you have f and df by the y are continuous in what in r so do you think the function is continuous in this region or not <coughs> there's nothing that will make the function discontinuous at any value between x equal to one half and uh, y equal to one here in this region. So if x equal to one half minus one half here and uh, this is not x not x yeah this is x not so so minus one half to from minus one half to plus one half there is nothing that make this this function uh, singular. What do we mean by singular? For example, <coughs> if instead of x square, this is um, one half minus minus x plus y. So at one half, x equal to one half, it will give you what? And y equal to one and y equal to zero, this will give you what? <coughs> zero. So the function will be infinite. Yes, one over one over zero is a singular function. But there is nothing like this in this uh, in this situation. So <coughs> function f. And its derivative are continuous, and df by the y are continuous. So what's uh, what's the function f here? The absolute value of function f is 2xy, the absolute value, divided by 1 plus x squared plus y squared, the absolute value. 
if you want to get <coughs> the function f less than or the derivative of the function f less than certain values. So we said that uh, for the existence, we have to have uh, the function f of x and y is less than what? k. And the derivative of this function f, and f of x and y with respect to y is less than or equal to what? m as we wrote last time. Yes, guys? So if we want to calculate what's the upper value here, for the slope. So we will say that, okay, we want to maximize this. Yes? So maximizing what's the, what's, this is equal to 2 multiplied by the absolute value of y multiplied by the absolute value of x divided by 1 plus x squared plus y squared. If I want to maximize it, what's the maximum value for x? 1 half. So I will put what? 2 multiplied by what? 1 half. <coughs> What's the, the maximum value for y? 1. Yes? And what's the minimum values for whenever you will have x negative, you will square it, you will get a value. Whenever you will have y negative, you will square it, you will get a positive value. Yes? So whatever you will put here, whether it is negative or positive, it will be maximum. It will give you a value. Maybe it's a maximum. So I want to, min in order to maximize the whole thing, I have to maximize the numerator and minimize the denominator so that I will get a maximum value. Yes? When is the denominator is, is maximum, or minimum, sorry? X and Y are equal to zero. So in this case, this would be what? One and two by one half is equal to what? One. So K is equal to what? Equal to one. Did you understand what I did? Yeah, I want to maximize, I want to get an upper limit because I said the function f of x is bounded in the region x and y, region r, x and y, and it is bounded, bounded mean that the value of f of x and y is continuous in this region and it is less than certain value, okay? This value is k. So it is less than an upper bound. k is upper bound for, for the function. The function cannot be greater than certain value k, okay? So in order to, to see what's the value k, I said, okay, what's the maximum value for x and y? Right. One half and one. But yes? If I plug the same value, I, uh, this is not a maximum here. Okay. The function x is not the maximum. So you know the fun the function x is maximum when this is maximum and this in, when this is minimum. Right. You don't need to keep the same no, 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 no. I want to maximize the value for the funct function to see what's the maximum for this value. So the maximum here is k equal to what? k equal to 1. If you, if you substitute with any values and try to get the, where is the maximum for x and y, just differentiate this by, by x and differentiate it by y equal, equal to 0, and then you will get the values that will maximize this. Yes? Uh, what if there's no square on the denominator? So, so you have to work, you have to, uh, this is an easy example. Yeah, exactly. you, have to, you have to see, the if, if there is no yeah. square here, maybe we will not have a solution because it's no longer, it's not, uh, no longer, uh, continuous in the in the region R, so I'm I'm just looking for a function like this continuous, and and we look for the k equal to one. So now you knew that k is equal to what? One. So what's the minimum? What's the condition? <coughs> what what was the condition? The minimum of what? Of a and b over what? Over k. So this would be the minimum of what? A is what? One half. And B is what? One. And K is one. So what's the minimum of one half and one? One half. So now, now A is less than B over K. Yes? So we are in what? We are in this, in this region here. And B over K will be outside this region R. Yes, guys? Yes? This is the situation. A is greater than b over k. b over k will be, this is 1 half, minus 1 half, 1 half, and b over k is 1. So it will be here and here, 1 and 1, minus 1 and 1. Yes, guys? So, so, so now, where is the region where the equation is? This equation is continuous. Minus what? Minus 1 half to what? 1 half. This is the region where our function is our solution exists 
and it has a unique solution. Okay, guys. Now let's look for the other example <coughs> where we do not have a unique solution in the region of interest, for example. So, example number two is dy by dx is just 2y by x. How to solve this equation? dy over what? Over 2y is equal to dx over what? Over x. And this will give you what? <coughs> One half ln what? Ln y is equal to what? Ln x. Ln x, you will multiply 2 here. And then you will, you will raise 2 here plus, plus what? Plus some constant C. And this will give you what? Y equal to what? C prime X squared. So this is the solution. This solution has two regions. Yes? This solution has what? Two regions. Y equal to C1 multiplied by X squared for the X less than what? For the X less than zero and Y equal to C2 X squared for the X greater than or equal to zero. Okay, guys? So, I have two solutions. So, let's look now for the function now. What's your function? f of x and y is what? 2y over what? 2y over x. Is the function continuous? Let's assume that the initial condition y at 1 equal to what? Of 1. And I want to see if this is continuous or not in the region from x in the two interval. x from negative infinity to 0 and x from 0 to infinity. Is it continuous or not? Yes. It's not continuous. At x equal to 0, well, this is what? Are you considering 0? Yeah, I'm considering 0. Yeah. No, it's inclusive. No. So, so, so at 0, this, this function is not continuous. It's 2x over 0. And this will give you what? Singularity. Yes? So what's dy by dx by dy? df of x by dy is equal to what? 2 over x. <coughs> so neither, neither f nor df by dy are continuous. So we do not expect that we have a solution in the negative infinity to plus infinity. Yes? We do not expect to have a solution between negative infinity to plus infinity, including the zero. Okay, guys? So let's, let's look for the case where you will have So here is the two situation. This is y and when you have from infinity to zero, from infinity to zero, if you solve it just from infinity to zero, you do not include the zero point with you. So this would be what? C1 equal to one, let's say. C1 equal to two. C1 equal to three and so on and C1 equal to negative 1, 
C1 negative 2 C1 negative 3 and so on so this is the situation where you have X is less than 0 in this region here the situation where you have <coughs> X greater than 0 this is the situation where X is greater than 0 not equal so this will be C2 equal to 1 C2 1 half let's say negative 1 half and negative 1 C2 ok guys now so we do not have a solution <coughs> between negative infinity to infinity and if we look at let's assume that we are looking for point one and one here so you have a solution that goes C2 is equal to one and this is one x equal to one and y equal to one so y is equal to C2 x squared and c2 c2 is equal to 1 so y equal to x squared is a solution one of those branches c2 is equal to 1 so at x equal to 1 y equal to 1 x equal to 1 y equal to 1 but let's see this is just before 0 yes what happened if we if, if we cross 0 now if you cross 0 you will notice that you will have infinitely many infinitely many solution that corresponds to this case for example so this is why we do not have a solution <coughs> at, at zero here so now we understood now how to solve how to, f to find um, whether there is a unique solution or not or do the, the solution exist or not and whether it is unique or not for a first order differential equation now we will start showing how we will solve the first order differential equation because uh, it is of importance to you guys when you try to solve for example a higher order differential equation maybe you can transform the higher order if it has a, a solution a higher order differential equation to a system of first order differential equation and you knew how to solve analytically, the, analytically the system for a uh, first order differential equation so if you have just a um, couple of equations uh, let's say two two or three equation first orders and you can solve them analytically we will see show you how to solve the uh, first order differential equation so this is the, the topic now solving first order ODEs the first case if the if the first order are separable what does mean separable separate the x and the y. I can separate dy over let's say a function of y and equal to dx over a function of x then I can integrate so usually the form is some function j of y dy by dx is equal to a function f of x this is the functional form for a separable equation then we can say that g of y dy is just f of x dx yes and then you can integrate both sides and once you integrate both sides you will get a constant here so let's take an example
the example is a function or a differential equation dy by dx equal to negative 2xy. So if we rearrange, this will be dy over y equal to negative 2x dx. Then you will integrate and get a constant here. So this is what? Len y equal to what? x squared divided by 2. 2 goes with 2. Plus what? Plus the constant c. And then your y it will be e to the power of what? Minus x squared multiplied by e to the power of what? c. It is e to the power of everything, but because it is e to the power of something plus something, I can separate it to e to the power of minus x squared multiplied by e to the power of c. Do you, do you understand it? Or do you have doubts? Okay, so e to the power of constant is what? A constant, another constant, so I will call it c prime. So this will give me c prime e to the power of minus e square. So easy to solve. Let's take another example, which is the exponential. Exponential growth or, or decay. We have some phenomena that, that uh, has an exponential growth or decay. Who can tell me or give me an example for a function of exponential growth or decay? Hmm? What about the world population? So the population, so we can take um, uh, population. What else in business? Banking, interest. compound interest, compound, what else, who took uh, nuclear physics, nuclear engineering, what? Oh. Try to switch a little bit. Instead of radiation, it will be radio radioactivity. So radio active decay is given by an exponential decay. What else? Penetration of light. What else? Number of traffic accidents, for example, on a highway. So, <coughs> so if we solve, um, usually it will be, let's say, rate, rate of growth will be proportional to, let's say, some, some uh, alpha, the proportionality for F, uh, uh, factor here, if we are talking about money, for example, so it will be proportional to interest, for example. If we are talking about the compound interest problem, so um, the rate of growth of your money will be proportional to your interest, and then um, rate, rate of growth, usually if your money is Y, so your rate of change is D, dy by dt is proportional to some um, y, which is the original amount, and this is equal to some proportionality, which is alpha here. Maybe this is the uh, interest multiplied by, by your original uh, value here, function y. And y, let's say at t equal to 0, the initial value is equal to y naught. So uh, to be able to solve this, you will say that dy of t over y of t is equal to alpha 
delta t and then you will say at t equal to zero this is y naught and t equal to t this is y of t then this will be len y of t from y of t to y naught this will be what So then, when you substitute, this will be y of what? y of t over what? y naught equal to alpha multiplied by t because at t equal to 0, this is 0, and at t equal to t is t. So alpha t, and then you will have uh, y of t is just equal to the initial y naught e to the power of alpha t, and this is the exponential growth. Function, of course, it depends on the value of alpha at t equal to zero. This is one, so you will have alpha if alpha depends on alpha one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. If alpha is less than zero, so you pretty much you will, you will have something like this. And the faster decay means that alpha is what? Alpha is greater here. Yes, the faster growth, alpha is greater here and the slower growth is alpha is, is smaller here, and the slower decay alpha is, 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 is smaller here. Okay, guys? Okay, do you understand? So <coughs> this is just this, uh, this problem here. So uh, we can just discuss some of the properties of this uh, interesting uh, exponential growth function. So the first property, we call it the doubling time. Doubling time. And it is if alpha is greater than zero. So we are talking about here if alpha is, is positive. So if alpha is positive and you have a specific alpha, for example, and alpha is like this, so this is y of t and this is t. Let's assume that you start here at one, then um, let's assume that this is at t equal to t1, you have y1 of t, and at t equal to t2, you double the value of y, so this is y2 of t, and y2 of t, y2 of t is just equal to twice y1, y1 of t. So this is the time here, um, t2, minus t1 is just equal to the, uh, the doubling time, doubling time. And how you get it? You get it from the equation here. So y2 of t divided by y1 of t is equal to what? Equal to 2. And this equal to y naught e to the power of minus, or e to the power of alpha, multiplied by t2 divided by y naught e to the power of alpha t1 and this will give you y naught goes with y naught and this will give you e to the power of alpha multiplied by t2 minus 1 t1 and this will be t2 minus t1 we call it t doubling t doubling and this will be just what len len 2 over what Lin 2 over alpha. What's lin 2? 0.693. Nearly, nearly 0.7. Okay, guys. 0.693 over what? Over alpha. So you can just get the doubling time by just substituting this equation. And there is a very well known from 101 economics, very well known law that the majority of you may be heard about is called the law of 70 or rule of 70 it's called rule of 70 so if you have your alpha is given in fraction percentage not fraction percentage is given in percentage so I can substitute over there, and I said that the doubling time, t doubling, 
just equal to 0.693 divided by alpha, but alpha is giving in what? In percentage, so I have to make it like this. So if it is 2, so it will be what? 2 over 100, 2%. So 2 over 100, 3%, 3 over 100, 10%, 10 over 100, and so on. So you can get the percentage upstairs, and this will be what? 69 point what? Point 0.3 over what? Over alpha, which is almost what? 70 over alpha. So if I told you that <coughs> the world population grew up by a 2% every year, <coughs> what's the time needed for the world population to double? 35 years. 35 years. Okay, guys. If I told you that your money increases by 10% a year, what's the, the needed time for your money to double? Seven years. It's very handy for me. Okay, guys. <coughs> if alpha is the opposite and alpha now is negative, so you are talking about instead of doubling time, you are talking about the half time. Why? Because now alpha is no longer greater than zero, alpha is less than zero, so this is what? This is what? Decay. So if you are decaying like this, and let's assume at t equal to zero, you are, you are one, at t equal to some t half, you are what? Point half. So again, what's your, your half time now? Guys, so it will be the same. 0 0.69, 3 over what? Over alpha. Why? Because y of t over y naught is equal to what? One half. The other time it was what? Two. two. So I take ln two. But this is what? One half. And the negative sign here will flip it back and make it two again. Yes, guys? Do you understand? So it is exactly the same. You flip the one half, you make it instead of two, make it one half, but you flip the sign from positive to negative, so it will be the same. So if I am telling you that, for example, you have a radioactive um, decay, and um, your Y now is in the number of radioactive atoms, and N naught is the initial number, e to the power of minus lambda t, lambda is the decay constant. And I told you, for example, this is the half, <coughs> the half time. <coughs> so I asked you, what's the, after n half times, what's the remaining amount? So you will say that my remaining amount, y or n, n after some time t divided by n naught, which is the initial number here, after n, n uh, half times, will be one half to the power of n. So if we said that n is one, one half time, so it will be what? n of t over n naught is one half. Two, ha two half times, so you will have one fourth. Three half times, one eighth, and so on. Okay, guys, give you another, another example here. The other example is y prime is equal to some certain function j of y over x, a function of y over x. So there is many tricks. You have many tricks to convert or to make an ODE as separable. 
So if it's not looking separable ODE, you can use mini tricks to make your ODE separable. So now this is y equal to j some function of y over x and I cannot separate it easily. So what I will do is I will say y over x, I will call it what? u. So what's y? It's just u multiplied by x. And what's y prime? It's just what? u prime multiplied by x plus what? Except you differentiate with respect to x. So there's no x prime. It's dx by dx is 1. Okay, guys? And y prime is equal to what? j of y over x. And y over x is what? u. So this will be j of u. Okay, guys? So I can say that y prime x equal to j of u minus u. So y prime x will be what? j of u minus what? Minus u. Yes? And in this case, I can rewrite it again. I can rewrite it again to be what? To be y prime divided by what? By g of u minus minus u equal to 1, minus one over x. And what's y prime? u prime? du by the what? By dx. Yes? <coughs> Divided by g of u minus u equal to what? 1 over x. So du over g of u minus u equal to dx over x. So I make it separable again. And the solution will be what? du over g of u minus u equal to d of x over x plus certain constant c. So in this case, you will find from here what? u. You will find what? u as a function of what? As a function of what? x. And what's u? y over what? So y will be what? f of x multiplied by what? x. Yes, guys? So it will be f of x plus c. And this will be f of x plus c all multiplied by x. y equal to x multiplied by f of x plus c. Another way, instead of the looking at the separable equation, maybe we will look at, it's better to stop here. There is only two minutes. Then I will continue the rest of the sharp day. Uh, solution next time because I will start a new solution for the exact differentials and show you how how we'll solve for the exact differential. Do you have any questions so far? Any problems? If you have any concern, any problem, anything you do not understand, if you are concerned with your grades, if you do need any help, my office is open. Um, my email also is accessible. You can email me or call me at my my office and uh, good luck for everybody.